on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program Malcolm Out Loud from MalcolmOutloud.tv and author of the Out Loud Minute, which plays on 700 stations across the country on a daily basis. Welcome to the program, Malcolm. Good to be with you, bud. Uh, so I'm very curious. Um, I want to start off with this Paul Ryan pick. I want to ask you, let's, let's start here. Paul Ryan is very closely associated, of course, with the, with the Ryan plan, which um, proposes a tremendous amount, from my perspective, of cuts, and I think by anybody's perspective, of cuts, particularly to uh, social programs. How, how do you think this is going to factor into the campaign over the next couple of months? Well, it certainly is going to play into the extreme factor uh, of uh, Obama's campaign of class warfare, that's for sure. Uh, of extremes, the haves and have-nots. Uh, listen, that budget, I mean, it, it, that that's, you know, the, the Democrats are going to obviously want to talk about that uh, for lots of reasons. But, you know, it's not realistic. There, there needs to be a middle ground, and both of these parties need to understand that. There has to be a middle ground. The Ryan plan is not the plan that, you know, was enacted. It wasn't approved. We know that. Uh, and, you know, but it's, it's substance in that plan. There, there has to be this balance of, uh, you know, cutbacks being serious in this country. That's what Americans are looking for is the difficult decisions our politicians need to make. And until that happens, I think we're going to continue to have uh, nothing but challenges in this country. But, you know, Ryan's got some good ideas. They're just, it's just not going to be as extreme as maybe he thought it might be back when he enacted that plan or, or put that plan forth, you know? Well, now, now give me a sense of, like, when you say get serious, what, what does that mean? I mean, what, what ideas of, of Paul Ryan's are, are good ideas? Well, you, you know, you, this, you, you have to remember, there's, we're, in, we're in this sort of extreme... I say that. Uh, you know, this, when I say an extremist mode, the position we have our country in right now economically is devastating. When you look at the deficit and the position of our country long term, it's devastating. This causes, uh, you know, this, this calls for extreme measures. That, I think, is what fuels things like when you say the Ryan plan and when you see plans like this coming forth. Do I think that plan was an extreme? Probably. You know, the, the, again, I'm, I'm saying there needs to be a balance. We need to have well, serious not, yeah. cutbacks. What, 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 where would you, where would you cut? Uh, where would you, where, where do you think we need cuts? I think we need to go in and cut. I think across the board, everything, all entitlement programs, everything, everything. So you would, you would cut Social Security, everything. Medicare, everything. I would, everything needs to be looked at. Everything, everything with a capital E. We're bankrupt. We have no money. Well, wait a second. Just like you would do if you're a business, you wait. have to go and look at your plan. Wait a right? second. Wait, wait. What do you mean by we're bankrupt? I mean, we have a marginal tax rates at the lowest levels they've been in 70 years. I mean, so our debt, to, our debt to GDP ratio in September for the first time since World War II is in excess of 70 percent. We have a debt that is that is close to 17 trillion. We have uh, combined with Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid in excess of 200 trillion dollars in debt. I would wait say that's wait, bankrupt, wait, wait, wait. my friend. The only thing we haven't done is hold, file hold the on. paperwork Malcolm, at the courthouse. Malcolm, 200 trillion dollars of debt? In Medicare and Social Security, I, I don't, I don't understand that number. When you combine Medicare, Social Security, M Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, the debts. When you combine all of this with with our seventeen trillion in debt, the numbers are in excess of two hundred tr trillion dollars, according to the CBO. Well, but but that doesn't include. You're you're not calculating the revenue that comes from those programs. Well, the, the, I mean, uh, I mean, people sure. pay into taxes. <laughs> People pay into taxes into Social Security. People pay in taxes to Medicare. You're just looking at the side of the ledger that says how much we've got to pay out, but you're not looking at the side of the ledger that says how much comes in. We're in a very, very dangerous region, I believe. And I believe on, uh, yeah, this this program that, you you know, we think that uh, Democrats think we can just turn our the other way and not pay attention, I think is reckless at best. 
I don't really understand where this mentality comes from. We've never had this attitude in this country that it doesn't really matter. We'll leave the next generation worse off than we were. We've never had that attitude in this country. We took care of the next generation. So this whose, is the tax first generation. Rates, whose tax rates would you go back to? I mean, I, I, I presume you're talking about there would be increases in taxes, right? I mean, if we're, if we're talking about uh, having to uh, to close this uh, deficit and debt, which you know the CBO uh, projects that if we were to if we were to just go back to the the uh, Clinton tax rates, we would close the deficit within seventy years. Well, <laughs> there are going to be some very difficult decisions for the next administration, whoever it's going to be. I assure you of that. Uh, I, whether it is o Obama and Biden or Romney and Ryan, they're going to make, have to make the very difficult decisions if this country is going to be serious in moving forward with, with a, a vitality that, you know, that, that, uh, that we, we want, that we're encouraged to have, that business people uh, want to enjoy. I, I think, you know, you, you take a look at... Uh, uh, you know, the, the programs and the entitlement programs and the expansion of government uh, over these past uh, four years. And it's well, been wait expensive. A second, wait do, you, a second. do you disagree with that? Uh, the expansion of government, I mean, it's true that there are far more people on food stamps now. That's because we've just gone through the greatest recession we've had uh, since the Great Depression. I mean, so we have more poor people in this country. It's not that the programs have been expanded. It's that more people have become eligible uh, uh, eligible for these programs because they're hurting. So do you think, I mean, would you cut, would you cut children from Medicare? Would you cut, would you, would you, I mean, where, where, where get I me, mean, get, get into some of these specifics because we have a guy who has proposed the privatization of social security the essentially the destruction of Medicare. Uh, if you want to add the qualifier as we know it, that's fine, I guess. I mean, but he's talking about privatizing it, leaving elderly people uh, a a substandard voucher to go and try and buy insurance on the uh, private markets. There's barely any any insurance available for people at that age, and for good reason. Uh, so I, I'm just curious when we talk about these in these general terms about hard decisions and whatnot. I'm just curious as to what, what, what the specifics are. Well, you know, uh, the, the same specifics that I believe got us in this position to, in the first place. Uh, I think we've created the society. We've created, the, you know, uh, there are two points to this uh, that we continue to have rhetoric. And Republicans, and Democrats love to talk about, you know, uh, uh, you know, what we're entitled to and what we're not entitled to. You're going to cut the children off. You're going to, cut the, you know, the elderly off. This is sort of the scare tactics of how we come down the road here. Well, and but we I mean, build that's what it is. Huge empire. I mean, when but we then, cut Medicare, that's what we're doing, right? I mean, well, listen, you know, we, you know, we can't afford if you can tell me how we can afford the current state, if you can tell me how we can afford the current programs, then I, I'd say terrific. Go back to you know, Clinton administration them and expand them. Go back to Clinton What's administration that? or even Reagan administration tax rates. I would raise the capital gains tax rates as well. And I would remove the cap from Social Security. You remove the cap from Social Security, that program is completely solvent until right. both both That's of right. our grandkids' grandkids uh, are uh, collecting insurance. This the program. This program did not happen overnight. This program has, and this program isn't. And, and let me say this to you: this pro, where we're at right now. When I say this program, where we sit right now in America, uh, is not just a short-term problem, and it didn't happen just in the last four years. By the way. Uh, it's happened with both political parties, and it's happened over decades. And right. when you come back to the – you talk about the previous administrations, you're correct. Because, again, I think we've passed this thing down the road all too long. And I think our, our political system is, uh, is, is in really need of, of uh, a revamp. I mean, uh, uh, until Americans hold them accountable and really look. As to who we have in office, and are they, you know, are they making the tough decisions and doing the things we want them to do? We're not seeing that right well, now. What in constitutes Washington. a tough decision? I mean, is the tough decision you're talking about raising taxes on uh, the wealthy the or across decision. the no, board? Here's, the, here's my or answer. Or is it, is it cutting, cutting programs that literally keep uh, no. elderly people out of poverty? And uh, here's the tough decision. Let me give it to you now. 
The tough decision is to balance the budget. The tough, like every well, state now, why, does, like why, every family now, does, let me ask you a like question. every business well, does. Well, no, I understand. But, I mean, you don't think that the, the government functions like a family. Well, listen, everybody on the planet has to balance a budget except the United States federal government. Well, actually, why do they no. Get in, fact, uh, uh, in fact, most federal governments don't balance their budget. I mean, there's a very good argument to be made that if you were to actually get down to zero debt, uh, it would crash the currency. But uh, but we don't have time to, to get into the, 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 the specifics on that. But what is the problem with the deficit right now? What, what, what is it that is, I understand that it sounds very problematic, but I'm curious from your perspective, what literally, what, what is the problem with it? You know, you, you, just on the surface, if you, if you take a look at the confidence that it erodes in the American public, and just, just, just take a look at the surface for a moment of this, and the sound bites of our, of our indebtedness, that alone is dangerous and hazardous. Well, no, no, I agree. Country. That's why I'm questioning what's behind the sound bites. I mean, because you're talking well, about. I mean, I mean, I isn't the fear behind isn't the fear that we're that that if we have too large of a debt, uh, or uh, and obviously the deficit um, uh, growing the debt that nobody's going to loan us money. I mean, isn't that the fear that that people are not going to see the country as an investment? And if that was I the think case. That's already, uh, well, listen, I, I, I think, you know, in spite of these things, America is still uh, the best investment in the world. Right. But, so you know, what's we, the problem? But, but, yeah, but right. But, but, but right. But we can continue to say that and take advantage of that. See, if you're coming from the class. I actually right, think that so we should be borrowing more money now. We have interest rates that are in negative territory. We actually make money. When we borrow money at this point, uh, if you include uh, inflation in that, we have the lowest uh, uh, treasury bond uh, interest rates that we've had um, in, in I, I don't know how many decades. And uh, I think, we're I in a position now to... The insolvency of our mindset and, and you know, just, it, it, you know, everything. I mean, take a look at the credit bureaus that you, you're going to see. I mean, we're being threatened now. It's not just S&P. I mean, we're being, you know, it's between now and the end of the year and between the next between the general election, uh, there's going to be uh, some difficult decisions and some hell to pay. And I think you're going to find some of these uh, uh, credit bureaus are also going to begin to uh, pull down that credit rating, which has never happened in this country before. Well, we've this had a credit. A our, hasn't our credit rating uh, dropped uh, already? I mean, and that didn't has, affect... But now you're looking at all the others that are also, that are, are monitoring, and we, that, we have a negative Did that negative credit rating... Outlook. Hold on, Ma uh, Malcolm. Did that credit rating affect our capacity to borrow? Well, it's going to, my friend. You, you just see, you, keep, you can't keep taking it on and taking it on. You can, you can get by for so long, but then, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to pull it over at the end of the day. When you say, it's a, you know, it, it's not, it's how far you move the needle on the meter. I mean, how far you, sure, the S&P negative rate, and maybe that wasn't as uh, dramatic as maybe you thought it might have, should have been, or someone else, but you know what? Uh, you start adding up the other factors that are going to play into this thing ahead, and I think you're going to find that uh, we're going to have some serious problems if we don't make the difficult choices. But so, what listen, are those difficult choices? I mean, uh, uh, we need to look at all entitlement programs, and we need, I mean, across the board. Okay, and, look and at them I, I and and do what? They need to be they need to be put in check to understand what can America afford. Time. That's the question at the end of the day. Right. So, uh, and, and, and I mean, we can afford a lot more if we, we raise more revenue by, by taxing people well, more. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll have to save that for another day. I have another uh, interview here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. I appreciate it. It's uh, MalcolmOutloud.tv and uh, author of the uh, Out Loud Minute uh, on 700 stations across the country.